Hey guys, Brian over here again, and in today's video, we're gonna go over all the buttons in the 2022 Toyota 4Runner SR5. Like all of my fast button tutorials, this is going to help you go over all the buttons in the inside as if you're driving the car for the first time. If you're new to the channel, I just wanted to say thank you for checking it out. Welcome, I hope you enjoy the video, and if you're one of my subscribers slash followers, I wanted to say thanks again for your support. All right, let's check it out. This 2022 4Runner is equipped with the only technical package that gives you the 8-inch screen with the dynamic navigation. Of course, the other three packages available are the running boards, the third row, and the slide-out tray. With the key fob on me, all I have to do is press the brake and push the push start once, and it starts right up. The truck has auto down windows all around and auto up on all four, so with a hard push or hard pull, you can let go for a hands-free experience. Door lock and window locks are right next to each other. If you feel, you can feel a little nubby on the lock portion of the button. And right in front of that, I have a button to push down to lock the windows. Down below on the left side of the dash, I have the lever for the hood to pop the hood. A couple blank inserts where there would be features on a more upgraded 4Runner. I have the inverter here for my power source back in the cargo area. A button for defrosting wiper blades. There are wires in the windshield to actually melt off some of the ice. And I have my mirror controls. If I push the R, I can toggle the right mirror. Push the L, I can toggle the left mirror. And if I push it a little bit, it'll go into a neutral position. Right next to that, I have the brightness of the gauges where I can slide it down to dim them or push it all the way up and lock it into the brightest setting. And the button right over here is for the automatic high beams. So when I put the headlights on and I push this in, I will have the automatic feature. Underneath the steering wheel, I have a lever that I can pull down where I can telescope the steering wheel and raise it and lower it. And once I find that position that I like, I can lock it right back in. On each side of the steering wheel, I have a separate stock, one for the lighting system and one for the wipers. So onto the lighting system, the headlights will give you the off position, daytime running lights for during the day, parking lights for when you're parked and you want those interior lights lit up, and headlights. When the headlights feature is on, that's when the automatic high beams will be active if I push this forward. When I bring it back, it also gives me access to operate the fog lights on or off right here, but for filming purposes, I will leave it in parking lights so that the buttons will light up a nice blue. On to the right, I have the operation of the wipers. So if I click this down once, it will go into the intermittent phase. In the intermittent phase, I can change how often they go here. Down one more click is low, down again is high. This section here is going to be for the rear wiper. If I twist this forward once, it'll go once in a while in the back. If I put it forward one more, it'll be back and forth constantly in the back. Above, if I pull this towards me, I'm actually going to wash the front windshield. And if I twist this away, it's going to wash the back. On the steering wheel on the left side, I have up and down for going through my different songs on the radio or presets, side to side for the volume. If I push this once, it's going to activate Toyota's voice commands. When I'm plugged into Apple CarPlay, if I push and hold this button, the Siri orb is going to pop up on the bottom, and then I can do the Siri commands. So that would be with a push and hold. The button down below is mode, which if you press and hold will actually be a pause slash mute button. And then down below when I'm connected to Bluetooth, I can pick up or hang up calls with separate button for each. Onto the right side of the steering wheel, I have the four arrows select and back button for the MID. The MID is the center screen over here by the speedometer, which we will get into in just a minute. And then I have a favorites page holder. So if I press and hold this, I can actually set one of those pages on the MID menus to have an instant access by just simply pushing the button. And then down below, I have the sensitivity for the automatic cruise control. There's three different following distances and the lane departure alert. When I push the lane departure alert, I get a little green symbol right here on the top. And I can simply turn that off like that. Speaking of cruise control, it's actually still a stock. So what I do is I simply push this in like that and that will turn on the system. It will say radar ready and I can press down once to set the uh, cruise control, which is gonna display on the MID. It'll show the speed I have it set to, which I can increase speed like so, or decrease speed like this. I can cancel by pulling it in or simply by pushing the brake. When I'm in cruise control, I can operate the following distance by pushing this button three times to change the following distance between three different distance settings. When I turn the cruise control on, it's gonna show the little symbol with the car and the arrow. However, if I press and hold the button, the arrow moves over and the car disappears for a normal constant speed cruise control if you do not like the adaptive cruise control. On the Speedo cluster, I have the RPMs on the left, the analog speed on the right. I also have my fuel level on the top right with a little arrow to show me what side my gas cap is on. 
and I have the engine temperature on the top left. On the top left of the MID screen, it actually shows me what gear I'm in. So if I'm changing gears like this, I can see it right on the top. That way I don't have to look down at the shifter. Down below, I have my total miles. But if I want to switch that with the trip, I can actually push this little stock over here. And I push and hold the clear. Using the arrows on the right side of the steering wheel, I can go side to side through the different menus. The icon will light up a bright white when I get to that menu. The I menu stands for information so I can see things like my digital speed and then I can use the up and down arrows to go through the pages. Sway warning is going to let me know if I'm driving tired and it'll tell me to take a break. Scrolling back down I can see my gas average. I can even see more information about my fuel economy, my range, and my average mile per gallon per tank. And it, even, it gives me a eco indicator here. The next menu over is a good menu if I'm doing a little bit of trailing. I can see my steering angle and I can even see my individual tire pressure. The following menu is going to be my navigation, so it's going to show me what direction I'm driving in and the road I'm on. The music menu will show me the artist that's playing and the song in case the infotainment system screen is preoccupied with something important like the navigation. And this menu is going to show me what the Toyota Safety Sense is sensing at a glance. The warning menu is going to store messages, so if the 4Runner's due for service, it's going to store itself there and constantly remind me. If it senses anything that's going wrong under the hood, it will remind me, and it'll even remind me to check my rear seats. And the last menu is the settings. I can actually change the sensitivity and a couple things with the lane departure alert. If I go down a pre-collision system, I can turn it off or change the sensitivity. I can even edit some stuff with my tire pressure in case I'm going to do some off-roading. And I can turn off the rear seat reminder if I want to, because that reminds you every time you turn it off. For meter settings here, I can change the language and units. That's pretty much all we have in the settings. Back onto information, most people like to leave it right here with the digital speed. Inside the center console, I have a 12 volt plug here. If I pull the little door up, I can plug in some accessories and the door snaps right back down on its own. And right in the back row, I have two additional USBs for even more charging. The feature that's entirely unique to the 4Runner besides the Tundra Crew Max is the automatic rear windshield. So if I push this and let go, I have a rear windshield that goes all the way down. Once I go down into drive, I can push the shifter over to the left and I can toggle forward gears or back gears. Also a nice feature of the cup holders, you can actually remove this insert for a larger cup. The four wheel drive system is operated with a knob, so this little slit here lights up blue at nighttime. You can actually turn this into high four on the fly while moving up to 50 miles an hour or so. But in order to put it into four low, what you want to do is bring it down into neutral, then put it into low four and either pick whether you want to go into drive or reverse. Once you're in four low and you put it into drive, you'll see a little orange symbol here that says four low. And you'll also notice that your pre-collision system is turned off. Also on the left side, you'll see that the vehicle stability control is turned off as well as your traction control. So this is gonna maximize for power and wheel slip in that treacherous terrain. Just keep in mind, you wanna keep it at low speeds when you're in four low. To get out of four low, I wanna put the vehicle back into neutral, go down to the knob and twist it back into four high. Then I have a choice between putting it right back into two wheel drive or I can drive it in four wheel high. And then once I decide, I can put it right back into two wheel drive on the fly while moving. When done driving for the day, if you want to use the parking brake, the parking brake is actually a push brake right down here on the left. Right in front of the four wheel drive shifter, I have a flip down door for the 12 volt plug and a flip up door for the USB. Remember that this USB plug is the only one that you can plug into to access your Apple CarPlay or your Android Auto. The climate control is a very simple utilitarian design. I have the fan speed dial here on the left. I have my air direction here in the middle and I also have the air temperature on the right. I can turn the AC on and off with this button in the center, and on the hot days, I have the recirculate button right next to the AC so I can maximize the AC's efficiency. And on the right-hand side of the AC button, I have a separate button here to defrost the back windshield and the side mirrors. Above the infotainment system, I have the hazards. And bear in mind that all four vents actually have their own individual wheel to customize the airflow. So I can have maximum airflow with this little symbol on the top and I can decrease it to half or turn it off all the way. One of the coolest features about the 4Runner is I have this old school Toyota clock that I can change by pressing and holding for hours or minutes. Of course, there's a digital clock on the infotainment system. So to change that, I would go to menu, setup, 
clock and I can change the time right here. On the infotainment system, I have four hard buttons on each side, on the left and on the right. The home button is gonna bring you to the home screen, which we're on right now. I can tell because it says home here on the left. The home screen is a great place to see different information all at once. If I simply tap the portion of the screen that I wanna see, it takes over the whole screen. Moving on to menu, this is where I can access some things like my settings, or I can even turn the screen off so that there's not a lot of light while I'm driving. Back to the menu, if I go to setup, I can turn the beep on and off right here. I can customize the home screen to change what it looks like, and I can even change the information that it shows. This is also a place where I can access some of the other screens that are gonna be accessible from the hard buttons, but some more important features are in the setup. For instance, I can change the vehicle to learn my voice. And if I scroll down to vehicle, I can go to vehicle customization and I can change when the locks come on and off based on my shifting. And I can also change how long the lights stay on when I turn the vehicle off, including interior lights. In setup, there are also some advanced navigation settings. I can set up my Wi-Fi, free trial, and I can go to my apps. But back up to general settings, another nice feature is I can change the theme of the vehicle. Pretty sporty. Say I'm not in the mood for the red and black and I wanna go back to blue and white, I can do that on the fly. When I push the down arrow here, there are some advanced keyboard settings that people don't really change, but on the very bottom, I can check for a software update. When equipped with a dynamic navigation or when you're plugged in for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, hitting the map button is actually gonna give you the navigation on the fly. And if I push the apps button on the right, I'm gonna have the authorization for the remote connect. I can see my notifications or start my Wi-Fi trial. To hook up my phone for the first time or access my phone menu, I simply push the phone button and then I can seek through my tracks right over here. Back to the home screen, once I have a Bluetooth connection with my phone, there will be four little slots here where I can actually save four people that I like to call a lot for a simple tap and instant phone call. And don't forget the two dials on the side of the radio system. I can push this in for power and change the volume here, just like on the steering wheel. And on the right, I can tune through the radio stations. CDs are out for 2022, so get your Bluetooth game on, guys. Let's check out what's above. Above, I have the auto dimming rear view mirror. So the little green light says that the system is working. Of course, I can turn it off like that. But while the system is working, when bright lights are behind me, this gets darker on its own, and it gets darker the brighter the lights get. Up above, I have a simple push for my sunglasses case with a soft backing so I can put it lenses in and grab it by the arms. This button on the left is actually going to turn off the vehicle stability control to maximize wheel slip when I'm off-roading. A-Track is going to reduce wheel slip to all four wheels, so it's going to benefit you when you're starting from a stop or if you're accelerating on treacherous terrains that are very slippery. And Decline Assist Control is actually going to give you more confidence when you're going down steep hills. It's going to do the braking for you. On the right, you'll see a button that says SOS. Every new Toyota 4Runner comes with one year or unlimited miles of Safety Connect. So that's actually gonna be accessed through your Toyota app, and it's gonna give you quick EMS help if you get into an accident or have an emergency. And lastly, up top, I have controls for the lights. Very simple here. I can do it with the doors or turn it off. The lights are actually powered by pushing on the light itself here. And in the center, I have a little display light, which is actually gonna give me a little beam of light that's gonna shine down so I can see where I'm reaching at nighttime. Onto the sun shades, I have a simple mirror cover that slides open and I get a little candlelight here that turns on. I can unlatch it from the right and when I put it over, there's a separate piece of plastic that slides out for when the sun is in that awkward position. And don't forget to check out my video on how to properly deactivate your key fob and a couple other features regarding how to use this if the battery dies. And lastly, your 4Runner floor mats for the passenger and driver clip into the floor. So by turning the little knob here, you can actually release the floor mat. Don't forget to clip it back in so it does not ever slide under your brake pedal. So there it is, the fast button review for the 2022 Toyota 4Runner SR5. The tool of the tools, the best, the dinosaur out of the bunch. Let me know what you think. If the video helped you, comment down below. And once again, thank you for your support, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.